Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. I have a sweet set of mini slimline cards featuring some new products by Spellbinders. Color Block Mini Drops and Color Block Mini Triangles. It feels like it's been ages since I've worked with alcohol inks and I love it. I love the textures and the colors. And when I saw these two fabulous die sets, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with them. I'm going to be working on Upo Translucent Paper. This paper is synthetic and non-porous. The alcohol inks move very well on it. The translucent finish adds a beautiful quality to the inks. I'm applying Ranger Alcohol Inks. For this first panel, I'm using a combination of lettuce, pesto, and ginger. The colors are very muted and soft. To help create effects and move that ink around, I use isopropyl alcohol. It is very affordable and I just pick it up at my local drugstore. It is often recommended that you look for alcohol content that is at least 90%. But if you can't find it or you don't have it on hand, using isopropyl alcohol with a lower content is just fine. It won't be quite as effective at moving the ink around, but it will work. So what is the difference between blender solution and isopropyl alcohol, or as it's commonly called, rubbing alcohol, besides the price? The blender will give you more time to create those soft transitions between the colors. Working with the isopropyl alcohol, you have to be pretty fast. You will have to apply your ink and then wherever a hard line forms that you don't want, you have to get your alcohol on immediately. Find it helpful to put the isopropyl in a small bottle that has a tiny nozzle. Then I can direct the alcohol exactly where I want it to go. There are many different methods of moving that alcohol ink around on your panel, but when you're working on UPO, there are some limitations. When I want to do heat embossing on an alcohol ink background, I'll apply my ink to paper that is used for printing photographs. I have found that Canon paper is quite heat resistant, although I still will use the heat on the lower setting. Because UPO is a synthetic paper, it will melt with any kind of heat, unless you have a blow dryer with a cool air setting. There are also manual ink blowers. They're like puffers and they work quite well. But personally, I like to use a straw, a metal straw to be precise. For as much control as you could possibly have over alcohol ink, I find that the straw works best for me. Keeping in mind that I'm going to be die cutting my entire panel, I want lots of texture. I've placed some of the isopropyl alcohol in a small spray bottle. An area of the panel, a light spritz, and then I let it dry completely before I move on to another section. This is an effective way to add fine texture. For my second panel, I'm going to be working with patina, clover, and tranquil some pretty blues and a touch of green. One of the cool things about alcohol inks is that you don't need to be working with a lot of colors. As the inks move, they just naturally form beautiful gradients. This panel, I'm working on a Lazy Susan or a turntable, whatever you like to call it. I'm not sure why I didn't think of this for the first panel, but let's chalk it up too. I haven't done this for a long time really does make things a lot easier being able to move that panel around and direct the ink easily in different directions. So anyone who is new to alcohol inks, I really should have mentioned earlier that when you're working with isopropyl alcohol, you need to be in a well-ventilated space. My craft room has very high ceilings. When I'm working with these inks, I open up my window. I don't bother with a mask because I feel that I'm getting enough airflow that it is well ventilated. 
but this is something that needs to be kept in mind. If you have the option of doing this outside, that would be the best bet. But for those of us like me who live in the Northern Hemisphere, that really isn't an option for about half of the year. So when the weather allows, the window gets opened and the alcohol inks can come out. And that is why I haven't worked with them for so long. Okay, so now I'm going to skip right to the end of this panel. I love how these inks can be manipulated and if you don't like how things are developing, you can either add more alcohol, move the ink around, or add more ink. It is a mesmerizing process and if you've never tried working with alcohol inks, I highly recommend it. And like the last panel, I'm going to finish up with my little mini sprayer filled with the isopropyl alcohol and add in some more texture. It's just a little bit magical. I really liked how both of the panels turned out. So I will admit it was a little bit hard to take those panels and cut them into strips getting ready for die cutting. There is going to be a fair amount of die cutting to do, so I'm going to use my Sizzix Sidekick. Both the Color Block Mini Drops and Mini Triangles come with two dies. One is a solid die and the other one produces a series of frames. For the Mini Drops, I'm just going to use the solid die and I'm going to be die cutting all of the blue alcohol background strips. For the other panel cut into strips, I'll be using the mini triangle solid die, but I'll also make a few die cuts with the frame die, along with cutting out some fine gold glitter paper with it. And if that wasn't enough die cutting, I cut black sheet foam using the solid dies from each set so I could stack each and every one of those die cut shapes. This is when I really appreciate having this little mini die cutter. I was going to be doing a lot of stacking and so I didn't want to be messing around with liquid adhesive. So I just use one of my tape runners that has a very sticky adhesive and ran it over the foam to stack them. I did have a little bit of stretching and so as I stacked, I trimmed. For the few die cuts that I used the mini triangle frame die, I stacked them by alternating between the alcohol ink frames and the gold glitter ones. All of these pretty alcohol ink accent pieces are going to be used to create some mini slimline. I've used a heavy cardstock Nina Classic Crest 110 pound to create my card bases which measure three and a quarter by six and a quarter inches. Two of the card bases were covered edge to edge with black cardstock. The rest were matted with panels that measured two and three quarters by five and three quarter inches. Then it was just a matter of playing with these pretty shapes and creating designs. When I began this project, I really had no idea how many cards I was going to end up with. I'm very much a hands-on person, and so I had to play with those shapes until I came up with designs that I thought were pleasing. And I just continued making cards until I had used all of those stacked accent pieces. When working on designs that are more abstract, it works best for me to lay everything out and then walk away. I find that sometimes I really hone in on the details and I lose sight of the bigger picture. Taking that break and coming back and looking at it with fresh eyes helps to broaden my perspective. Then I can decide whether I need to make any final adjustments, which I almost always do. So at the end of this process, I had five mini slimline cards. For just one of the cards, the shapes were overhanging off of the card base. To be able to cut through those stacked shapes, I use large shears to get a nice clean cut. I had a couple of pieces left over from both of the alcohol ink panels. For some additional detail on two of the cards, these panels were cut into three narrow bands. 
The sentiments for these cards are from Spellbinder's Laird Mix and Match Sentiments. This All occasion set comes with both the script and accompanying shadow dies. All of the die cuts were in combination of gold glitter paper and black cardstock. For the sentiment that I'm working on now, this is the only one that I've used the script without the shadow die. Sentiment is quite fine and I want it stacked nicely, so I leave the foam die cut in its backing, adhere the cardstock one to it, and then set it aside to dry before I remove the excess foam. For the rest of the sentiments, the shadow has been mounted on a foam die cut. The scripty word was adhered directly to it. The two cards with the blue alcohol ink mini drops were embellished with some gorgeous confetti by Studio Kasha called Sparkling Sea. The remainder of the cards were finished off with a beautiful gold confetti. As usual, I embellish the embellishment with Nouveau Crystal Drops Morning Dew. The crystal-like appearance of the confetti is a beautiful finishing touch. That completes this set of mini slimline cards featuring some new dies by Spellbinders, Color Block Mini Drops and Mini Triangles. Although these die sets consist of just two dies, the possibilities of how they can be used are endless. These dies are really fun to play with, whether you choose to use them as accent pieces or create full backgrounds. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I appreciate your visit.